This segment is brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Welcome back to Farm Factor and the Kansas Soybean Update. This is the Kansas Soybean Update. It's brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Brendan Geiger, who is from Denton, Kansas, is joining us. He's also a part of the American Soybean Association DuPont Young Leaders Program. And Brandon, here at Commodity Classic, this is phase two of your guys' training as part of the program. That's correct. So what are some of the things uh, ASA and DuPont have you do here at the Commodity Classic? You know, we've had several guest speakers that have kind of gave us a rundown or an overview of what they do on a, you know, a day-to-day basis with policy and with promoting ag on a national level. And, you know, they've just walked us through that process and, and what we can do to help them down the road. So what was some of their advice to you guys? Just being a good leader, being an advocate for ag, promoting ag, you know, on a daily basis, teaching younger generations and whoever we can when we're approached by people who are concerned about uh, topics, you know, in ag, GMOs, whatever they are, how to handle those situations and answer those questions and try and comfort them that, you know, there's not major issues. How important is that now with what we have seen in agriculture and, and the negativity in agriculture? Why is it so much more important now to be an advocate like you have been trained to do through the program? There's so much negativity around you know certain aspects, GMOs, certain herbicides that are coming to the marketplace. And it's important for me as a grower because we use those tools to be more efficient. They're beneficial to us to be more productive and, and, and be profitable on the farm. If we can't have those tools, it's hard for us to, to make a profit. You know, you and your wife, Blair, have been a part of this. How great of an experience has this been overall, being a part of this program and, of course, going through the training that you have? Yeah, it's been great. Probably one of the best things about this experience is the relationships we've built with with growers around the country from Minnesota, clear to the East Coast, North Carolina, South Carolina, and clear down to Texas, Louisiana. And we still talk to them, you know, on a daily basis. So we network with those people. We understand, we hear their concerns and their, their problems that they face on a day-to-day basis, and we can kind of work those issues out together. So now this is your chance to recruit. For those who might be interested in the program, why should they apply to be a part of the DuPont Young Leaders Program? Well, we always need more young leaders. We're the future of uh, ag, and we can you know, never have enough voices to promote ag and be advocates for ag. Sounds good. Brandon, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. That is Brandon Geiger from Denton, Kansas, who is a member of the American Soybean Association DuPont Young Leaders Program. He's been our guest on the Kansas Soybean Update. It's brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Learn more at kansassoybeans.org. For Kansas Soybeans, I'm Greg Akagi. Hope you enjoyed this week's Kansas Soybean Update. Stay with us after the break for more Farm Factor with Dwayne Taves and Peter Nowak. This Medford, New Jersey school bus runs on biodiesel, and so do these. In fact, all of these buses run on clean burning biodiesel, which is great because the more we use biodiesel in our heavy duty vehicles, the less carbon pollution in our air. Think how great it would be if more of our school buses ran on biodiesel. More biodiesel, less carbon pollution. More is less. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel.